My eight year old boy and my six year old girl, they are unique and interesting people just like any other person born of a woman. It is true that they both have promise just like any other kid out there in the whole wide world regardless of their existence regardless of their color their tribe and their nationality they are unique just like all of us and to say that they have potential you will agree with very many people on the face of the earth and uh, the problem is that very few people will dispute the fact that children are laden with potential waiting to be exploited the only problem is trouble is when the same 8 year old and 6 year olds they are gauged 55 years later you are someone at 55 if they have potential and you get lots of doubts today in the podcast we're going to continue on the message of potential and specifically we want to see how you can unearth the potential that god has put inside of you stay tuned Welcome to the Life Signatures podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut there has got to be more to life than this. And now here is your host Lawrence Namale. No doubt when you're gauging an older person and a younger person maybe your perspective of potential between the two is going to be different we look at children and we tell them they have a lot of potential and we keep telling them that they are and it's very paradoxical and ironical that they are the leaders of tomorrow and then the leaders of today you look at them and you ask them how have you expended your potential is this your best is this the very best that you could be you could be able to do and there are doubts there the promise that they had when they were kids when they were being told that you have great potential now that they are adults and they are in leadership positions are they necessarily exuding the very dregs of the details of their potential is this their biggest power is this their full blown potential no for the most part it's not but then when we look at kids we tell them you have potential there's a lot of promise in you they were been programmed to think they were been programmed to appear in this life it is in such a way that we think the more we age the less the potential we have okay that will be necessarily true if and only if the potential that was put inside of us was being put to work was being cultivated was being excavated and it was being used but i can tell you if at 45 they put potential inside of you to be an orator and you did nothing about it that potential is still available it is still in existence and can still be put into use and i can tell you this that if you rose up and you decided to go against the grain it is difficult it is tough it is like when you are launching a ship a spaceship it uses is nearly more than 50% of the strength and the fuel at launch it is hard but i can tell you at 45 you can draw a line in the sun my friend and you can decide today from now on i am going to cultivate the potential god put inside of me and i can tell you even if you lived for only 20 years from the year 45 and you only live 20 years later on fully deploying your potential thank you 
those 20 years that you're going to be alive will be the most productive years you ever lived and you will be the happiest. I'm telling you the return of 20 years can be greater than the return of 45 years if potential has been cultivated and excavated. And that is actually a tweetable quote. I'm going to tweet that. If at 45 years you decided to live the next few years fully deploying your potential, you will be the happiest human being on the face of the earth. And we are discussing how in the world can we excavate this potential? How in the world can we go out there and focus on the potential that was put inside of us? Because I believe if you wanted to make the human useless, valueless, inconsequential, redundant, if you wanted to kill the human, this is what you do. You remove from them potential. Oh, I'm telling you, it is a sorry thing. It is, it is a sickening thing to see a human being who doesn't have potential. And by the way, technically, there is no human being who doesn't have potential. The sickening thing you will see is a human being filled with potential. Like every time you see a mad person on the streets, what goes on into your mind? This is a human being with serious potential and it's being wasted away for one reason or another. And you see someone who could be able to do great stuff. But they have stooped low to do just the ordinary, like we discussed in the previous episode, just to do the ordinary so that they can put food on the table. Look, I am not looking down on people who are doing all that they can be to, so that they can put food on the table and clothes on their back and that they can be able to pay rent. But I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, above that, we can go against the grain and we can stick up like a sore thumb and we can break through the walls of opposition and we can expand the potential that God put inside of us. We can break the barrier. This world needs answers and some of the answers that this world is going to get, it is going to come from men and women who are going to come alive, who are going to break the cycle, who are going to break against the opposition, against the wall that uh, binds them to a culture of doing things for the sake of doing things. See, we've got to come to the level of wanting to go against the grain and unearth our potential. So you tell your three-year-old, four-year-old that they're filled with potential. But trouble is when the same three-year-old is gauged. Huh? You talk to them at 55. And it's true because even as we grew up, we used to have these dreams. I'm going to be a pilot. I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. <laughs> I saw a joke on Facebook the other day when people would be saying in, in, in class, I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to be a nurse. I'm going to be this. And now you look at them. They are the guys who are saying, do you want oil from Arabia? You want bed sheets from Egypt and so on. I am your guy. I mean, our goals have been cut and have been culled and we've retraced from life. We've retraced from the promise that we did have because we did not stick up like a sore thumb. We did not resist the oppositions that life threw at us so that we can become the men and women that we were created to be. The other day, and I'm not bragging, the other day, do you know what happened to me? The other day, I participated at my club level at Toastmasters, and I became tops. In fact, last year, I participated in it. There were four contestants in a speech, international speech contest. There were like five contestants, and I came up the third. That was a hint of potential, ladies and gentlemen. And what I did the other day, last week, is to participate in the same contest again. And I won the contest. I came up the first that should tell me something about potential. It is not just, see, every time you see something that is happening and you are coming up top and you are coming up with a promise, it is not that you have arrived. It is a promise. So if you look at me 20 years from today, when it comes to public speaking, I must be the SI unit of public speaking. I must be a voice. I must be some name that is heard in that area. Why? Because that is potential. 
So I need to make sure that for the most part, and I'm going ahead of myself, for the most part, any promise that I have shown in life, it is my responsibility to go against the grain and plan for it and make sure it is executed. And I'm asking you, because you might be listening to me in December 2019, and it's coming to January, and you're going to be making New Year resolutions. And I know you've got to put food on the table. I know you've got to put clothes on your back. I know you've got to pay rent. I know you've got to fend for your family. I know that. It is a mainstay every day. But you see, my friend, at the back of it all, there is something that you might be neglecting. Probably this year in 2019, you have seen a grain of promise inside of you. You've seen some grain of possibility that is laden inside of you. It is your responsibility. I am daring you to make sure that you go back to that potential. I don't know what it is. It might be an entrepreneur worship. He might be in writing a book and being a creative human being. He might be in helping some children to do one thing or another. He might be in playing a musical instrument. Whatever place that there is promise in, listen to me. I dare you to go out there and cultivate it. Make it your sole purpose in 2020 and beyond to make sure that where potential is, you are actually cultivating it. Listen to me and I'm going ahead of my Yourself. Chances are that you want do not want to do that because of the reasons I gave you earlier. Because you want to put food on the table and you want to put clothes on your back and you want to pay rent and you want to live basically, you want to eke out a living. The problem is that potential does not have a mathematical constant of payback in terms of money. You don't know how much money, how much money did I get with the speech contest? I got zero. In fact, I've got to pay for my club in order to participate for that contest. And so it's easy for me to start looking for things that I can be able to do that will bring me money at the end of the month and I forget what my potential is. Why did God put that oratory skill inside of me for me to exploit it to the fullest and to use it for the betterment of society? How is it going to pay? I don't know. But it is my responsibility to cultivate it. So you ask someone who had promised at three years of age, you ask them at 55 years of age or you ask them 55 years later, And you ask them about their potential and you get lots of doubts and you get lots of excuses and you get lots of valid reasons that they have been trying to eke out a living. Their wife gave birth and they had to take children to school and there are very many things that we are doing on a daily basis so that we can put food on the table, so that we can live and the very at the very place where we are trying to eke out a living, that is the very place we are hammering coffins, nails on the coffins of our potential. And so Miles Monroe tells us that the richest place is the graveyard because people go to the grave with potential in them. And why did they go to the grave with the potential inside of them? They were trying to eke out a living. So I'm cautioning myself and I'm cautioning the rest of us today. I know we are waiting for contracts to be signed. I know we are waiting for breakthroughs to come in terms of money. I know we've got to eke out a living. But I also know that potential is not useless. I also know that that which you put inside of you, it is not useless. I also know that you need to look back years from today and see that whatever hint of promise, whatever hint of possibility that God put inside of you, you actually cultivated it and you made sure that it is fully deployed. It is understandable that you've got to put food on the table. It is understandable that that is how we've got to live. But I am asking us, I'm beseeching us today, please let us not forget that there is possibility. Let us at least in one day dare to sit back and make sure that we are going to expand what the potential that was put inside of us is. And so we've seen in the past previous episodes that if we want to cultivate our potential, if we wanted to unearth and unleash our potential, number one, we need to understand this potential principle. And I keep making you to understand the potential principle in every episode. And number two, last yesterday, we saw that you need to go against, we need to take the path of most resistance. Don't be a guy who loves comfort. The more you love comfort, the more your potential stays docile. And it stays dormant. Number three today. Listen. 
carefully if you are if you are going to unleash your potential i need you to lean on to your natural gifts and talents i have already explained this and maybe i'm going i'm going to repeat myself i've been accused of a guy who is always repeating himself but let me tell you they say that repetition is the mother of mastery so let me repeat myself again and again potential is in your natural gifts and in your natural talent why will god gift you the way you are gifted why would my child my son love playing drums why would my daughter love dancing why would i be gifted with this gift of speaking and winning contests it is not just for me to win contests it is for me to put a premium on it if there was any investment that you are going to make if there is any investment that you need to pay top dollar for ladies and gentlemen it has got to be the investment of your gifts and talent your natural gifts and talent put your best investment in there i am saying natural gifts and talent because they are there they are easy to see they are easy to see some, some people normally will tell you i don't have natural gifts and talents but let me tell you there are some people who wonder have you ever come to that level where some guys are telling hey they are wondering how did you do that and for you it's nonchalant and it's just it just happened i mean no big deal about it that is a natural gift and a talent sometimes it comes to that place where you have this anger you see some disorder you go to a, an organization and you just naturally spot a disorder i remember the first job i ever got i went into into that place and i saw there were no systems in place there were no computers in place i mean people were doing things half as a hey wire and it pained me that was potential speaking to me that Lawrence you can do that that was a leadership potential that was rising up don't tell me you do not have potential things that people compliment you the most of there are fields of potential in there you understand what i'm saying so i am telling you that find out what it is and put your greatest top notch investment in it and you will not be disappointed with it when i was in primary school my natural gift and talent was in writing I mean when people were asked to write this creative writing people knew that number 1 is Lawrence the rest of us let us start looking for number 2 and let us fight for number 2 but number 1 is gone it is a foregone conclusion it was my natural disposition and i tell you i will do this to the, every time there is not a single time that i was de- dethroned from that position it was my natural gift and talent and i loved it and i still do love it but then i was naturally gifted in that area unfortunately i went to high school high school happened <laughs> high school happened and college happened you know what i did in high school i did like 13 subjects and there's physics and there's mathematics and there's all these things and of course there was english and there's creative writing but there was no focus on that natural gift and talent it was there in fact there's a time when i was our english teacher brought in a teacher just to a guest teacher so to speak to mark our creative work do you know what this guest teacher wrote on my paper he said has great potential i still remember that too you see teachers normally say good very good excellent good job but this teacher said has great potential what did i do with that feedback ladies and gentlemen i did nothing i did nothing you know what i was looking for i was looking for to become a lawyer i was looking i was going through the grain the rot the continuous system of the day the tradition of the day i only picked up writing <laughs> years after school maybe 10 or 20 years after school question what is there to show of my pursuits in education not so much question what is there to show of my natural gifts and talents in terms of writing and speaking i just told you the other day i won a speech contest an international speech contest i participated in it and won i have books upon books i have written i have this podcast you're listening to has been written has been curated many times over i have like 600 plus articles i have helped very many people in writing their own books that is my potential 
That is where the focus is supposed to go, where focus goes, energy follows. And I am beseeching you, if you have any grain of potential inside of you, by the way, put there your energy, put there your focus. Yes, you've got to put food on the table. Yes, you've got to pay your rent. Yes, you've got to take your children to school. But as much as possible, I am beseeching you, I am asking of you to not kill the potential by laying it down dormant invest in it in any way possible make sure that you invest in it people do not pursue natural gifts and talent because of several reasons number one is because of culture we want to go to school and all of us want to become lawyers engineers and doctors that is how culture is it has always been that way a large percentage of people marvel at raw talents that they see but still due to cultural norms they pursue a certain preset order of things in life this is because the route of talent pursuit seemingly does not guarantee any money at the end of the month the way people pay get paid is at the end of the month you work in a clerical job you work in a white collar blue collar whatever it is and then you earn some wages at the end of the day you earn some salary at the end of the day but if you pursue public speaking nobody knows how that pays but i can tell you this a speech that les brown delivers is worth thirty thousand dollars i had i read somewhere that zig ziglar gave a speech one speech less than two hours and he got thirty thousand dollars for it i'm not saying that we should be looking for dollars from that angle I'm saying that we should expand our potential against the grain of culture and make this world a better place and let the world pay us for our efforts for it. The second reason as to why we don't pursue our natural gifts and talents, will you believe it, is because of the education systems. A friend of mine says that the word education comes from the word ed- educare, which means to draw out, to draw out of. But instead of drawing out, education system pours in. There's a massive difference between those two schools of thought. Potential can only be drawn in, not poured in. Potential already is in there. In other words, we need to look at the school system and change it in such a way that people are drawing out something that is existing inside of people. We create the school system has got to be an environment that has been created for people to draw out what God put inside of them. Those who fail the examinations, they are expelled from the school system. They are discarded. They are labeled as failures and useless. They are not necessarily told so directly, but that is the inference. And let me tell you something about our lives. We believe inferences more than we believe reality. The reality on the ground is that you've been divorced. The inference is that you're not a good person, you'll never amount to anything. And you believe the inference more than you believe the reality. And that's what school does. Our present education systems are based on mass production of people. It is not individual best. It's not it's a yardstick for different people with different abilities, talents, and dispositions. The same examination being given to them as a yardstick. Anyway. The third reason as to why we do not necessarily follow our gifts and talents is because of focus. Still, the education system, if you wanted to find out the next steps of the people who have graduated from an education system, ask them what next. They will tell you they want to get a job. You know why? It is because a job provides a seemingly guaranteed security at the end of the month and at the end of the week, how you're going to be paid. Guarantee is the key word. We are looking for guarantees here. Risk is the key word with potential as we saw in the previous episode. And it's a sad fact that we don't focus. Just the same thing with me. I did not focus on my potential as a writer. Imagine if I daily focus on my potential as a writer. And I know there's this Chinese saying that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. 20 years ago, that would, that would have been the best time for me to focus on my writing skills on a daily basis. But the next best time to do it is today. 
So what are you focusing on? And I've been preaching today. I've been talking about you focusing on putting food on the table. Me putting food on the table. That's okay. But let me ask you a question. What if putting food on the table is connected to me doing my potential? What is food putting food on the table is connected to me doing my writing? Isn't that beautiful? My child loves drumming. What if I started making the field of possibilities available for him today? That he is cultivating it and I create the environment for him and I buy for him these things that see it is trial and error. If we are going to do life, let me just say this, if we are going to do life wanting to have certainty in it, we are going to fail many times. A Lord, one of my pastors, there's a time he was preaching and maybe his wife was telling us a story of one of the daughters that now she wants to be a nurse. Yesterday she wanted to be a teacher. That is so laudable and they are making it allowable. I mean they are allowing her to explore. It is exploration. If we are going to approach this life from the angle that, oh, I am supposed to do. And I know this is counter of what I am, I've always been saying in terms of purpose, that you have one purpose. But you see, you're going to arrive to that one purpose by trial and error. That is how life it is. It's not that predictable. So I'm asking you today, I am praying that you will go to all the strength, all the grains, and don't be predictable, especially when your children are involved. Let the field of possibilities, let them try this and try that. The other day, my child was going for dance classes and she was told, you can sing better than you can dance. That is okay. Although it broke her heart, that is fine. Let us try this and try that. But for the most part, let us not neglect our natural gifts and talents that have been given to us. Let us pay top dollar for them and cultivate them to the fullest. That is the only way. That is one of the ways that we are going to cultivate our natural gifts and our natural talents. And that is the way that we are going to see our potential come to the fore. Please do it. If you are going to invest something, invest in your potential. I see people investing in Forex, investing in Bitcoin, investing in stocks. That is fine. But as long as you are investing in those things, the worst you can do is to neglect investing in your gifts and in your talents. Think about that and let's meet again tomorrow on this podcast. Bye-bye. A special shout out to my mentor, Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University, found at mastermindmentor.com, who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.